Hi everyone, my name is Liz Pardi. I work as developer relations here at Nelson. Hey y'all, I'm Adrian Estrada. I am the VP of Engineering at NodeSource. And today we're going to talk about behind the scenes of NodeSource, Node.js distributions. The agenda for today, we're going to talk about an introduction, then a little bit of history of how NodeSource got involved in this project, the process of how a new release is created in the Node.js side, and also in the notes size, the nuts and bolts involved, and some of the technology used to support this project, some very interesting facts, and some recent to support, some traffic peaks when there is a new release, and how you can get involved, and conclusions at the end. Notesers, Node.js no binary distributions, maintains the availability and allows the usage of Node.js in the entire Linux community. If you're installing Node.js in production in a Linux platform, there is a big chance that you're using NodeSource Node.js binary distribution. A binary distribution is a software package containing executable binaries or programs that are ready to be executed. In this case, it will be Node and NPM compiled executables. By now you will be wondering, why is this important? Well, NodeSource Node.js binary distributions was downloaded over 50 million times worldwide last year. That is 50 million times people have been able to use, learn, interact with Node.js thanks to this project. Just last month, it was downloaded 7 million times and basically millions of applications and web pages are using it. Because of its availability, it has proven over the years to be the best source of installation and extensive use of Node.js packages in Linux, allowing the expansion of its use in the market. Okay, so uh, you may be wondering what kind of distributions are supported. So right now we have this uh, slide, as you can see. We support major Debian, Ubuntu, Red Hat, Centros, and Fedora releases, and many different distributions based on those. As you can see, you know the list can't go really, really long, but we are always trying to add more there. We are going to see later in the talk how we, you know, how this process works. Also, if you are using Codas infrastructure, uh, the major recipes or formulas or plugins uh, that includes, you know, Node.js installation usually work using Node.js, uh, or Node.js binary distributions. So if you are using this uh, Ansible, Chef, Puppet, or Sol, you are already using Node.js, uh, or Node.js binary distributions. If you use Linux, it's recommended that you use NodeSource installer. That's what the NPM documentation says, also what the Node.js official documentation says. So it's proven to be a very, the best source of installing these packages. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the history of this project, how NodeSource actually got involved. So here are some important milestones for a project. Everything started with Grizzly. He was actually supporting a PPA for Ubuntu uh, 2014. Uh, he was the main source of Node.js uh, for Ubuntu. And basically he joined forces with Node.js in 2014 to create this project. So initially we started supporting Debian and Ubuntu with Node.js 12, uh, 0.12 I mean. And we were also supporting 0.10, a uh, really early version. And a couple of months later, we start supporting uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, CentOS, Fedora, Oracle Linux, and Amazon Linux, which is uh, Linux Enterprise Distributions. Uh, later, we created a script to make the process to install easier because you have to manually add the, the PPA. Now everything is automated. And later, when IOJS was born, we immediately started supporting and supporting the create, you know, the fork that led to create the foundation. And later, we did the same with every LTS and stable releases that uh, Node.js project has been releasing. 
And in 2018, we started delivering Node.js in Snap packages, which is a, a compatible format with multiple Linux distributions that you can use. And since then, we have been expanding uh, support for many compatible Linux distributions. Now let's talk about the process of how a new release is created. There are two processes involved when releasing a new version of Node. First, comes from the Node project itself, and the second one from the Node.js Node binary distributions for the Linux operating system. So it's useful to understand how the release lines work. All the releases are scheduled and planned in advance. There are three stages on a version of Node, the current, LTS, and the end of life. Current is the most recent Node.js release line. In the graph is colored in green, as we can see here. And this phase lasts for six months, from April to October. LTS is an acronym for long-term support, and is applied to release lines that will be supported and maintained by the Node.js project for an extensive period of time. LTS divides into active and maintained. Active is the blue, as we can see here, and maintained is the gray. Active is the one that lasts for 18 months, and maintenance is a release line that is during the end of life. The end of life are versions that are not going to longer be maintained and will not be patched with fixes or bugs on any known security vulnerability. When a version breach at end of life is very advisable to upgrade. The whole process lasts for three years. Also, there is three types of releases. The major release that are for incompatible APA changes from version to version. Major release can also include changes that will normally be included as minor or patch release. Then we have minor release uh, that is include backwards compatible functionality changes. And the patch release include non-breaking bug fixes and security patches. So every new LTE is a major release. This is the process for the node project side. Now, Agent will explain how the release happens in the node tour side. Okay, so let's we already understand how a node.js version is created, right? So every time a new version is uh, released, uh, so everything starts from node tour Slack. So we already have an integration that uh, notifies us in, in a specific channel there is a, you know, a new version available. So that means we have to get to work and during the new version. For that, we have some automation in place that makes our life easier, right? So we have a bot, uh, our infrastructure bot is called Control Tower. Uh, it's something we use internally for all everything in our infrastructure. So Control Tower uh, allows us to run a single command to generate the new version. So that will communicate with a pipeline with, well, different pipelines that we have in AWS called pipeline. And that will use AWS code build to actually do the building of the package and all the packaging, right? Uh, it will generate all the different binaries we need to, uh, all the different packages that we need to distribute, uh, Debian, RPM, uh, and other formats. And then after build those, it will push to uh, Amazon S3 bucket. Uh, from there, we have a CDN that will serve for, you know, all these packages for everybody in the world. So that's how it works, actually. Uh, it's a semi-automated process uh, with a lot of automation involved. Okay, now let's see some very interesting statistics involved in this project. The total downloads of the binary distributions last year, 2018, was over 50 million times. And the total downloads from this year, from January to May, is 27 million. This graph is the download by month in terabytes. One terabyte is equal to 1,024 gigabytes. In January that last year, it was downloaded 44 terabytes of binary distribution. There is a lot of data there is a very clear rising tendency of downloads. And this year, the downloads are even greater. In just one year, the increase was about 85% of downloads. And in April, as we can see here, it hit the peak of 100 terabytes downloads. 
Again, this is like a lot of data. And we expect this number to keep increasing in the future as the node project itself expands. Okay, now we are going to analyze the numbers by version. So this is very important. Uh, let's take a look. This was 2019, right? So as you can see, there's people still already, you know, uh, getting really old versions like 0. Point something and before, right? Uh, same as B6, which was deprecated, obviously. And Carbon was still, uh, you know, in place uh, last last year. A lot of people, you know, most people actually is getting that version. Then we have nine and 10. 10 is really getting stronger. And a few people is actually using 11, 12, and 13 was it was launched. Now let's go to analyze the current status. Uh, so this is the 2020, and you know, as you can see, still a lot of people using B8 versions that is already deprecated. But the good news is most people is using 10, which is supported, and 12, which is the latest LTS that we are actually supporting. And some adventures people is using 13 and 14. Uh, it's really good if you want to try these things on production. It's really good. We are, you know, these are stable versions, but we always recommend to use the latest LTS in production. Now let's see where those downloads are happening in the world and where people are consuming Node.js the most. The top five countries consuming Node.js binary distributions are the US, Germany, France, Ireland, and the Netherlands followed by UK, China, and Canada. Many countries in South America are also consuming binary, as well as Russia and Australia. The only African country on the list is South Africa. Let's hope more countries keep using this. Okay, so here we have some recent digital that we are we started supporting. So as related to Spartus and the and um, latest Linux Mint, Boss, Purez, Trisco, and as you can see, many compatible uh, distributions. We are always expanding this list. We are always looking to add more distributions and you can request support if you want. Later, we are going to find how. So it's possible to see a peak on the day of the release of Node.js, as we can see in this image. On June 3rd this year, there was a release and it reached 750 megabytes per second downloads. So every time there is a new release in Node.js, there is a peak on downloads of binary distributions. So here we are going to talk a little bit about how deprecating versions works. So these projects suffer two kinds of deprecations. So the first one is when a Node.js version reach end of line. So end of life means you are not going to receive any security update or any bug patch in the future. So we always recommend that you stay in the current supported version. Uh, we, one thing that is important to note here is that we do not remove the old packages. So even if you are using a pretty old version of Node.js, you can still keep using NodeSource, Node.js binary distribution. But the other process is when a Linux distribution goes in online. So basically your Linux distribution, your operating system is no longer receiving any update, any security update or support. So that means we, you know, we always recommend to keep in a proper uh, maintained version of your operating system. So still we do not remove the old packages. So even if you are using a really old, uh, not uh, like Linux distribution, then you will get support to get uh, those Node.js not just, not just packages. Okay, but even if you're using a pretty old version, uh, we try to warn you, right? So please update your Node.js or you will see this thing when you're installing the Node.js version that you're uh, trying to install. So we present this deprecation warning and we make you wait 20 seconds so you can read the message and realize that maybe you should be updating your Node.js version. 
So as we can see, there is a lot of people that are using versions that are no longer supported. Actually, last year, there was about 5 million downloads of Node.js versions that were no longer supported. And we want to launch a campaign that is upgrade your Node.js version. So here's what we have for the future. So we are going to start supporting Flatpak packages. Uh, it's a new way to distribute packages for different Linux distributions. Actually, it's a very uh, good idea. Uh, so we are going to start supporting this format. Also, we are going to work to support SUSE Enterprise, which is a, a major Linux distribution that is no longer covered by or uh, not source not just distributions, but we are going to work to get that done. And as usual, we are going to continue to expand uh, the compatible distributions uh, support. So if you want to have a distribution supported, you can go directly to the project and Liz is going to explain how to get involved. So how can you get involved in this project? There are many ways to contribute. First, you can go to this link. This is the repository of where the project is host. And you can submit an issue, comment an issue, or a pull request. And it's mostly related to supporting new distributions to upgrade the distributions or to create and update the scripts to download a certain distribution. Another way is to keep updated the documentation. If a new version or a distribution changes, it should be updated on the docs as well. Once you submit an issue or a pull request, suggestions could be made to keep compatible with the rest of the distributions. And submissions are always welcome. If you collaborate with this project for a few months, you can ask and you can be included in this repo as a collaborator. Some conclusions. Using node source Node.js distribution is the best and most recommended way to install Node.js in Linux for production environments. NodeSource has been able to deliver Node.js fresh to your Linux system via your package manager within hours or even minutes, not days or weeks, of the formal release by the Node.js project in many combinant ports. And as I've already repeated multiple times, NodeSource continues expanding support for new packages, formats, and distribution. This is really important because we want to support more people using Linux to have Node.js in production. Also, we are looking for more community involvement in the project. So the majority of our scripts are open source. And as you can see, uh, there is a lot of activity in the repo that we just mentioned. So please come join us and uh, be part of this big effort to support multiple distributions in M production environments for Node.js. Thanks for watching our talk. We hope you enjoy it. Uh, I hope with this talk you can understand the magnitude of this project and you're willing to collaborate. Also, these are some of the notes channels so you can follow us. Okay, thank you very much for attending this talk. As uh, you can see, uh, there is a big effort from the uh, notes to actually bring Node.js in production uh, in Linux distributions. So help us to reach more people and support more use cases. In Nodesers, we really care about the Node.js community and we created a new platform dedicated to Node.js content, news and updates in one place. This is divided into four sections, video, blogs, Node.js binary, which is the talk we just did, and community, where we're going to celebrate key people in the Node.js ecosystem. You're welcome to explore, read and be a part of this project. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you next one. Bye.